as far as the present political uh, conflict that is taking place for the last hundred years, we feel that this conflict is part of a solution, but it is not the uh, part of the problem, but it is not the problem. Uh, because Islam was there before this conflict, Islam will be there after this conflict. And this way, we, we try to look at how can we adhere to Islamic teaching and use these Islamic teachings in order to promote a peaceful uh, solution to the, uh, to the conflict. And in this way, we are seeking to find we do not want to be part of the problem, we want to be part of the solution. And we do not want religion to be part of the problem, we want religion to be part of the solution. Similar, we look at the situation today and we find that also there is this um, uh, controversy regarding many surahs, many issues, and we find that we have to interpret these surahs, these issues within the context of the whole, not to take them as isolated. And for instance, when the Quran says uh, religion to God is Islam, we, um, we do not think that the proper uh, interpretation of that is the Islamic faith in that sense, but rather the wider meaning of Islam, which means the Islamic faith, the Jewish faith, and the Christian faith, because all of them fall into the category of what Islam means, which is surrendering to God, believing in God, worshipping God. And in this concept, all three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, actually fall within this category. So, and there are many verses like that. So we, we look at the, uh, the conflict, and it is a complex conflict, and it has been the longest conflict in modern times. Yet we find very uh, easy answers to the difficult questions. First, we look at the question of Jerusalem, and we find a simple answer to that. Jerusalem is actually a city that can accommodate the three people whether it is the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews. It is a city that where, if you look at it, uh, it is uh, two cities in one. There is the old city, which is actually includes the holy places. This is the religious Jerusalem. This is the historic Jerusalem. And as a result, we feel that this religion, this religious city should become internationalized or that it should be it's a, it should be a corpus separatum regarding uh, the uh, the city in the sense in, in the meaning of what has been uh, said in the UN resolution uh, partition resolution 181 and as a result we feel that if we can have a special status for this city to be to be a model of peace and for people from all religions uh, to come and pray in that city and to be just uh, the sovereignty in the city would be for God and as a result you would uh, tend to have people come in go out uh, free and uh, it can be run by a council of the, from different religions different countries uh, different international organizations that could be selected but the idea there is to have this separate. Outside the city, we find the municipal Jerusalem, which actually it is an expansion on the old city. And it has happened only in the last hundred years because of the overcrowding within the old city. And so as a result, we feel that this could be separated into East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem. East Jerusalem, which is the Arab side, could become the political capital of uh, Palestine, of the state of Palestine, and the other one to be uh, the political capital of the state of Israel. Now we feel that there is a need to end, an urgent need to end the occupation, and to declare a Palestinian state on the one side, and the, and the Israel state on the other side. 
and these states would be uh, Israel would be a Jewish democratic state and Palestine would be a Muslim democratic state a Muslim in the sense that not as a in the sense that it will become uh, a religious state pure pure religious state in the caliphate sense no it is the idea there is to the uh, religion of the state would be Islam, but yet Muslims uh, would actually do not have any special privileges within that state. It will be a democratic state in the sense that Muslims, Christians, and Jews will exercise equal rights within that state. Similarly, within the state of Israel, uh, although it would be a Jewish state yet, Christians and Muslims will be treated with equal rights, uh, being a democratic state. So this is the concept of the two-state. And these, in that sense, the two-state uh, solution is our answer for the, for at least, for uh, at least the beginning, the uh, first stage, because we feel that the two-state solution will actually answer the aspiration of both the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. The uh, Palestinian people have for a long time aspired to have a national uh, homeland, which is uh, Palestine. The Jews wanted a national ho homeland, which is Israel. And so in this concept, both people uh, can be uh, living uh, next to each other. Now, uh, we have also the Palestinian uh, want the political nation identity, which is Palestine, and uh, in this way we can find that uh, we are satisfying both national uh, identity and the religious uh, aspirations uh, in both sides. This is regarding the structure of the uh, of the uh, uh, system of the political system in the future. We feel once they are settled, uh, once the Palestinian state is settled and uh, have, be, have uh, come to maturity, then uh, we can talk about a confederation between the state of Israel and the state of Palestine. And uh, it, uh, it will be also very useful for other states to include other neighboring states such as Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, and then this way we can have a regional uh, uh, unified uh, system. So this is regarding the structure of the state. Within the state, I think that it is very important that uh, women to be given their uh, equal rights to men and uh, to exercise to have to have them exercise that right. At the same time would like the economy to be a liberal economy that uh, and this economy it is not an authoritarian system it's not a socialist system but rather more of a capitalist system in combination with socialism it is it is uh, a, a hybrid between uh, the state helping people who need help within the system economically and the state letting uh, competition and uh, economic competition to thrive within the uh, system and to try to avoid having monop monopolies within the uh, economic uh, system. So from here we can have a democratic political system while having a liberal economic system within the state. Regarding the uh, prisoners, we feel that the prisoners should be uh, released and uh, go back to their families. Regarding the refugees, we believe in the right that the uh, we believe in the right of return, but we look at it differently. We believe that the right is holy, but the return is negotiable. And we feel that those who would like to return from the Palestinian side, uh, they could return to the state of Palestine, and those who uh, do not want to return to the state of Israel could be compensated, but could find the homeland in the state of Palestine. Similar to uh, uh, Jews from the Arab countries uh, who immigrated to Israel uh, in 1948, 
there could be a compensation package for them. Uh, regarding borders, we feel that the borders should be permeable in the sense that in the beginning we have a wall that separates us, but rather this wall does not uh, falls actually into much into Palestinian territory, so that it does not reflect political borders. We feel that the borders should be the 1967 borders, as have been agreed by the United States and Europe and even uh, some Israeli politicians, in the sense that uh, we are looking at areas where can, there can be swaps or there can be uh, uh, there could be alterations within the border, but basically the concept of the 1967 border is the one which we hope that uh, uh, to achieve. Uh, we also we uh, believe that uh, with regard to the settlements that there will be that we feel that these settlements uh, should be given the choice of being if uh, they fall within the Palestinian territory, settlers would be given the choice either to be compensated or to stay as full-fledged citizens of the state of Palestine. And as a result, they can have that choice, whether they would like to remain or they would like to leave to, uh, uh, whether to Israel or to wherever they would like to go. But uh, they can have that choice also. Those who stay can stay as part uh, citizens uh, with equal rights and privileges. Those who would like to leave could be compensated for their homeland, for their home, and for their belongings, and for uh, to, uh, for the uh, uh, moving uh, for moving outside uh, the settlements. So basically, we are thinking in terms of uh, uh, a way to find peace, a peaceful coexistence. We, uh, we, we tend to find that there is so much interlap between the uh, state of Palestine, state of Israel, between the Palestinian community and the Jewish community. And uh, in that sense, that's why we feel the most the win-win uh, situation uh, for this, uh, uh, the win-win solution for this situation would be to try to find solution where you do not exclude people, you do not build walls between people, you do not try to discriminate uh, among people, but rather to let people exercise their rights and uh, go about. I believe that what, uh, what basically an Israeli want and what basically a Palestinian want, they both want the same thing. What they want is to wake up one morning and they can, they have a job, they have a, a, good, li a good life, they can provide their children with a better future, with education, with uh, jobs. And in this way, uh, I feel this is a human nature. And uh, this will eliminate the idea of prejudice, the idea of incitement, the idea of conflict. And I hope that this will be the vision for our future.